we we're talking about quadrilaterals and their properties and quadrilaterals just generic four-sided figures but then there's some special things happen one side one pair of sides are parallel two pair of sides are parallel no sides are parallel and then we get some right angles congruent angles or we get four congruent sides and then we get the combination of those so there's the properties and words so make sure you have those written down somewhere but let's look at the properties in pictures so we'll just start with your basic quad it's actually really boring um, no sides are the same no angles are the same it can be pretty much anything you might think that's a trapezoid but it's not those those sides aren't parallel so generic quad most anything can even be concave as in a as in it uh, one side caves in that's a quadrilateral okay so boring now let's make some things special and let's go to one set of parallel sides how do we prove that they're parallel how do we show they're parallel well parallel is a slope concept so this slope of this side is 5.18 and 1.59, that's okay, those aren't supposed to be the same. It's this 0.024 and this 0.024. We've got one set of parallel sides. That's all we need to make a trapezoid. Things don't, numbers don't like being moved around too much. There we go. Again, 0.014 and 0.14. So one set of parallel sides, that's it. Uh, angles can be kind of all kinds of measurements, but something does happen with these angles. If you look at those two and add those together, and let's see, look at these two, not these two angles, add them together, um, what are you getting? I'm thinking I'm getting 180. So the, the, the top and the bottom and the top and the bottom on the other side, they're supplementary. So that's a trap. Let us look at parallelogram. All sorts of things are happening here. Man, we got uh, two sets of parallel sides. So 576, 576, 0202. We got opposite angles being congruent. 100 point, 100 point 95, 100 point 95, 100 point 95, 100 point 95. Oh yeah, look, those are supplementary. Those are supplementary. Those are supplementary. Those are supplementary. Okay. We also have, if you look over here in the algebra, um, a bunch of same numbers, 626, 329, 329, 626. All right. So where's that coming from? Well, that's the sides, that these sides are congruent, and these sides are congruent. So that's some of the properties there. Um, the bisector aspect. Let's see if we can show the bisector. I need to hide some stuff, though, because it sometimes just gets too busy in here. So I'll just delete some stuff. We already looked at those slopes. We already looked at these angles. We don't care about these anymore. All right. The diagonals are bisectors. So what does that mean? That means the diagonals are cutting each other in half. AE is 2.83. So can you guess how big DE is? Oh, where'd you go? Oh, there's E. Um, e to D is 2.83. Let's go B to E. Is it 2.83? No, 3.97. Let's go here. 3.97. Okay, so they're cutting each other in half. They're not necessarily the same size as the other diagonal, but they're cutting each other in half. They're bisecting each other. Doesn't matter what I do with it. Always cutting each other in half in a parallelogram. So that's your fun parallelogram. Lots of properties there. Um, let's go over to kite. Kite, we got a perpendicular in the middle. We got these, let's go up here. These two, the top two, A, F, and A, E are the same. I think that's the 4.75, right? Yeah, because they're getting bold. And then we got 6.33 is right here. 6.33 is right there. So we've got uh, 90 in the middle. We've got top two sides. They don't actually have to be the top. We can, you know, turn this kite kind of any way we want. 
So two consecutive sides are congruent. And then the, these two angles are the same. So one pair of angles are the same. Now we also do have one bisector. And that is this cross here is getting bisected. That's kind of important to know. So that's kite. So let's drop down to rectang rectangle. Yeah, let's go rectangle. And we got 90s in the corners. We got sides are parallel, sides are congruent, uh, diagonals are bisectors. But what happens when we do the 90s is that those diagonals also become the same size. Look, you see the A is 544, G to A is 544. We knew that. But F to A is also 544, and E to A is also 544. That's important. And let's go to rhombus. Now we got, again, two parallel opposite, opposite angles are congruent. Uh, now we got all sides are the same. So that side's three. I'm looking over here on the left. That side is three. The sides are bolding when I hover over them. Three, three, three. All the sides are three. All the sides are the same. I've got 90 again in the middle because of rhombus is a special kite. And they are bisecting each other because of rhombus is a special parallelogram. The diagonals are bisecting each other. Um, the big thing in the, in the rhombus, all sides are the same, and the 90 in the middle. That's what it looks like when things happen. And now for square. Square is a rhombus and a rectangle. So the big thing here is that, you know, we've got 90s in the corners, we've got 90 in the middle. Those diagonals are the same size. So let's just measure the same size. We know they're bisectors. So that's 738. So guess how big it is from H to F? It will be 738. They're laying on top of each other. And they're also bisecting each other. So again, big thing. 90s in the corners, 90s in the middle. Diagonals are the same size. Real important. How do we show any of this stuff on a drawing? Well, let's pull up a parallelogram. If the top two sides are the same, I put a tick mark on them. One tick, one tick, anywhere. And the sides are the same, the right and the left. So I've already used one tick, so now I gotta go to two ticks. How do you show things are parallel? That is actually by drawing an arrowhead. And I've seen two different ways to draw it. Some draw it same direction, some draw it going right, going left kind of thing. I don't think it matters what you're telling people. I kind of prefer this idea of these are both running to the right, so they're running parallel. They're running the same direction. Um, but again, if I already used one arrowhead over there, I've got to use two arrowheads on the other one. I'm drawing with a mouse, so my arrowheads might not be beautiful. Now, how do you show people angles are the same? Again, it's a tick mark thing, but we just kind of put an arc. We draw an arc because it's a, I don't know why. It's just what everybody does. And then I've already used one, so i got to draw two over here. Some people actually draw an arc and then put a tick mark on it. You know, one tick mark, two tick mark. That seems kind of silly. Just draw the arcs. So, two arcs, those are angle tick marks means that the G, angle G and angle H are the same. Um, what else do we got to get in here? Oh, uh, oh, bisectors. Let's see, I've used one, two, three. So now i got to go three tick marks. One, two. This side is the same as this side. And then four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's what you're looking for on drawings. Tick marks, arcs in the corners. Arrowheads to show things are parallel. That's what you look for in a diagram to find the properties.